the Kushaitic people are primarily indigenous to Northeast Africa and speak or have historical spoken Kushaitic languages or Ethiosemitic languages of Afro-Asiatic language family. They are believed to largely occupy the Horn of Africa, Nile Valley, and parts of the African Great Lakes region, that is Tanzania and Kenya. Historical linguistic analysis and archaeogenetics indicates that the languages spoken in the ancient Kama culture of what is now southern Egypt and northern Sudan Wakushaitic languages. But the fragmentation of these groups has weakened their tradition and cultural heritage structure, barring their customs in the debris of historical books. These are the elders of the Wayu community. have come out of their secret dwellings to offer blessings to their good for a bountiful harvest. They dance and display their powers and magic to strengthen faith in their tradition. It is their belief that uh, they are the first human being which were created by God before any other human being. And the rest of the communities of people of the world came after them. <laughs> Oromo clans uphold Kurbis and Buna ceremonies, which uniquely singles them out among the race of Kushaitic ethnic groups. In Alanga Kumanisha, what Savan Bayo or the Wulio specific, and the Fatishana he. The Korbe ceremony is conducted to appease the gods on special occasions, only presided over by the spirit men selected by the Wayo Elders Council. <laughs> The purpose of that corbis is one uh, to ask God for peaceful coexistence. Two is for rain to come, so that uh, people will receive pampa harvest if they are farmers. People will receive so many animals producing calves. Their roles are dictated by the spiritual faith and discharging their services in the clan is unquestionable as no one is allowed to dispute the God's voice. They remain most feared and respected, only appears when there is a specific need in the clan. However, women are not allowed to partake in the rituals nor hold positions in the council. They are responsible for household chores and looking after children. The skin uh, pieces which are cut from the sacrificed animal into, into thin strips and then a small hole is made in one end of the skin so that it can be put, uh, put around the wrist. That signifies that they have to be to, they have been to a ceremony where an animal has been sacrificed. Then the, every person is given a strip of a long strip of skin. So when he goes back to, to his village or Maniata, 
Then he will cut into smaller strips and give out first to his male children. Then the male children of uh, their clan, who may be present in the in the in the in his village or Maniata, is called Midich. And again, it is common among all the Oromo communities. <laughs> While the Kenyan Somali people, their renowned nomadic lifestyle remains a mark. Milk and meat remain staples of their diet that aid them in surviving in the jungle. The trait of milk harvesting is entirely left to men. The female has 80% of the household 80 to 90 percent of the household uh, cause, while the male, the kuchunga boma, na kuchunga ngamia na mwombe. Shaka mwa, toka ngamia meletoa tunaweka hapa sasa. While preservation is women's role. Tangu zamani family alikuwa na panyanga kwa sababu ni kitu ya utamaduni. If a man is caught doing, uh, you will be denied, denied uh, the ladies to marry. You cannot marry because you are found to be someone who is maybe greedy. Or... Milk is either turned into powder form by sun drying, then coated fermented milk on the flat rocks, or hides. This hole here is not cosmetic, it has a purpose. The purpose I said are two the purposes. One is to see how far your process has gone, to guide you. Two, it removes pressure so that once pressure accumulates here, this lid will fly away, which means you are likely to lose the whole milk. The preservation of milk is equally a novelty in the north. We travel and we will find a Somali homestead. The ladies will fill this with, with milk. So not necessarily will everybody go to get this container, but they will give us this one full and we share. Wooden girls are rubbed inside with smoky herbal sticks several times then left to dry without being clean washed. This is a wooden container. When there is moisture, bacteria is likely to grow for and other organisms. So one is they dry the wooden uh, container. Two, smoke has a very strong property of uh, disinfection. These herbs smeared in the guards act as food preservative. Na hiyo ni kitu ambaye inazaidia hizi miti kukulete harufu mzuri na maziwa hizi haribike. They are prevalent because one, they have the ability to provide germicidal properties. One of the elders confirms that now milk is fit for consumption and could stay longer without getting sour regardless of the weather conditions. Inaweza tunza 24 hours. So this one is used to obtain uh, fats from milk, so we get fats from milk. Uh, it takes about four to five hours, depending on the strength of the person. Uh, not necessarily that one person use do it. The family members share the, the role. Somebody does it. And also, this is the work of females. the water community, their fragile cultural pillars are long gone as assimilation by larger surrounding communities has drained all they had.
are skilled hunters and gatherers, they only brag of the tact indigenous and traditional ways of preserving food like meat and honey. But nothing is left for their heritage to identify them as one of the Oromo Kushaitic speaking clan. The members showcase their culture in songs to express their determination in seeking recognition following serious threats of being swallowed by larger communities living around them. On the other hand, the name Gabra have roots in the Somali word Gabi. Meaning an evergreen plant that grows on the desert. goes, the Gabra ornamentation and physical culture is similar to many other Kushaitic speaking camel herders. As nomadic pastoralist, survival in the jungle is key and adapting to the prevailing hardship is mandatory.
The jungle of Shaba has been home for the Boranas for several centuries. Being the first to settle here confirms their dominance. For years, territorial war between Borana, Trukana and Gabra has colored this land with innocent blood. But the Boranas have maintained a simple lifestyle where elders believe in rituals to appease the long gone ancestors for safety and unity. Besides, tribal secrets are never laid out of the basket. All that is murmured in the darkness remains in the dark. In this land, Buna ritual stands as a pillar of blessings. All blessing ceremonies must be accompanied with the coffee rituals. Beans are fried in some oil until they turn charcoal black. Then they are poured in, then a bit of milk and water is poured in a special wooden container bowl called kori. And then it is poured there and uh, with the oil. According to their belief, uh, when man created God, then man asked, uh, sorry, then God asked man to obey him, not to disobey him. So, but with the nature of man, he disobeyed God. So God got, up, got upset because man disobeyed him against his uh, request or against his uh, orders and he cursed man. Unfortunately, man died. So when God came to see man, he found the man has died because he had cursed it and the God cried. So they believe that where, when God cried, his tears fell on the ground, and the spot where the tears fell, coffee trees sprouted. So it has a, a very, very important significance among the Oromo community, the Sidam community, and the Amhara community, or generally all over Ethiopia. Uh, they give a lot of reverence to coffee as being grown from the tears of God, so they feel it is a gift from God. And therefore, the, any ritual, any ceremony must in all the coffee ceremony or bunna ceremony as it is called in the Oromo language. Beans are fried in some oil until they turn charcoal black. Then they are poured in, then a bit of milk and water is poured in a special wooden container bowl called kori. And then it is poured there and uh, with the oil. Now the oil floats on the top, so before the bunna or the coffee concoction is served, uh, everybody present is given a bit of, a few drops of oil. It is just for smearing, for blessing. 
normally they would uh, rub their uh, palms with it and smear a bit of on the forehead and sometimes on the arms and legs and maybe they are walking stick. It's, it's kind of a blessing. You can show that, that the elders, the seven elders, they were each kind of biting the a bit of coffee. That's called, that is known as the bulla, bull, bunna kalla, killing of the coffee bean. Okay, that is part of the ceremony. As nomadic pastoralist, survival in the jungle is key and adapting to the prevailing hardship is mandatory. They have tapped based ways of preserving meat, what they call nyir nyir. Strips of fresh camel meat are left in the sun to dry. And let a cut into small pieces that are fried in oil with garlic until they are dry. For use, it is cooked in portions and melted to be served as stew with pounded maize meal, rice, beans or just eaten on its own as a whole meal. During breakfasts, Nyer Nyer is served only to men. These are institutions that order, legislate, and codify the social life of different ethnic groups of Oromo. During my visit among the Oromo clans, I had the chance to taste Nyir Nyir and drank camel milk preserved in containers treated with herbs. It is a taste one acquires over time. All these communities on the northern part of Kenya, particularly the Boran, Gabra, Rendile, Wayu, is not uh, eroded is because we have roots in Ethiopia. So we have all the paramount king who is called Abagada. All those clans who are in Kenya, they are rooted to those ones in Ethiopia. So this culture cannot be eroded because it has the root in Ethiopia. So once we don't know, we just go there and follow those instructions as it is written. But the cloud of anxiety is gathering over these communities. Will this heritage survive in the wave of culture, exportation and modernity as the world becomes one village? For Culture Quest, I'm Levis Msumba.